Good afternoon everybody. I've just realised my camera's not particularly central and I feel like I'm looking over to the side. That's a little bit better. Well, good evening. Good evening. At the end of a very busy weekend for us here in Truro Diocese, we've had the joy of having the Archbishop of Canterbury with us all weekend. And uh, I've joined uh, with many other people at 7.30 in the mornings for morning prayer with him. And also he came to join us in St. Column on uh, Saturday morning for our Just Be session. Um, so that was uh, a real pleasure. And he got to talk to our food bank as well, which was great. So welcome to you all. There's no comments as yet, so I'm not sure who it is that's watching. Um, but it's great to have you with us. And I am going to end this weekend with a quiet evening prayer this evening. I've put the link on there for you. Hello, Moira. I was just saying I haven't had any comments, but there you are, you're here with me, which is lovely. And I was just saying that I was going to do a quiet evening prayer this evening, which will follow the same sort of format as our morning prayer does in the week. So uh, hopefully you can link in. Hello again, Val. Okay, I hope uh, I hope your son um, is, uh, is um, well, he's still in all our prayers, shall we say. Uh, we were praying for him again this morning. So love and prayers to you and your son and of course all his family over in America. So let's begin evening prayer this evening together. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. And by the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. So our psalm this evening begins with Psalm 50. O Lord, the most mighty God has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silent. Consuming fire goes out before him and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful, who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God, your God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house, nor he goat out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole earth is mine and all that fills it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and fulfil your vows to the God Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honour me. 
But to the wicked, says God, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant off upon your lips? Since you refuse to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you made friends with him and you threw in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things have you done, and should I keep silent? Did you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you, and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You that forget God, consider this well lest I tear you apart and there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me, and to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 57 Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfils his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down, they have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. So our first reading this evening is from Genesis Chapter 24, beginning at the first verse. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his house, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live, but will go to my country and to my kindred and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and swore to me, to your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, 
taking all kinds of choice gifts from his master. And he set out and went to Aram Naharam, to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down beside the city by the well of water. It was towards evening, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please grant to me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. I am standing here by the spring of water and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. Let the girl to whom I shall say, please offer your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, there was Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor. Abraham's brother, coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. The girl was very fair to look upon a virgin whom no man had known. And she went down to the spring, filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me sip a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw for your camels also until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw. She drew for all his camels. This man gazed at her in silence to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold nose ring weighing a half shekel and two bracelets for her arms weighing ten gold shekels and said, Tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahar. She added, We have plenty of straw and fodder and a place to spend the night. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the way to the house of my master's kin. Our canticle this evening is a song of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, whose judgments are true and just. Praise our God, all you his servants, all who fear him, both small and great. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. So our second reading this evening is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 21. When Jesus had crossed, crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw him fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death, come and lay your hands on her so she might be well and live. So he went with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him 
Now, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I only touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped and she felt her body that she, she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, lay down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And, she immedi and immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He ordered, he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Our responses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. So our gospel canticle in the evening is the Magnificat. You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. 
So let us pray. God is close through all our troubles and can bring us safely through them. So let us pray to the faithful God who knows us already and loves us so much. We pray for barriers within the church. Barriers built up by fear or prejudice misunderstanding or hurt and we pray that they may be broken down in Christ and unity restored. We give thanks for Archbishop Justin and for his time spent with us this weekend. We give thanks for our bishops, Bishop Philip and Bishop Hugh, for our Archdeacons Paul and Kelly. We pray for all those involved in the on the way process, for the strain of trying to plan the future. We pray for relationships during this process and we pray that through all this that we listen to what you want us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world to be governed wisely and well, with proper consideration for the vulnerable and the weak, with cooperation, honesty and respect for all. We pray this especially in times of war. We think especially of the Ukraine at this time and for all other countries suffering from war at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the healing of hurts and tensions in our families and for our friends, thanking you for the blessings they give as friends of Christ, may we be generous in our friendships. We give thanks today for those that shared fellowship this morning. We pray especially for the congregations of St Enida, St Morgan and St Evel who have worship and will gather as friends in Christ today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those disturbed by mental health and for all who are rejected and despised. We pray for all in desolate situations at the moment and ask for your comfort and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those whose earthly life has ended and for those grieving for loved ones. Enfold them in your love and let them become aware of you beside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks to you, O Lord, for the loving way that you provide for us, even during the darkest of times. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for evening prayer, whether live or after the event. Um, I'm just looking ahead. So tomorrow I do morning prayer at St Enida at 9.30. And then I'll be making my way to Marks and Spencers for about 10 o'clock. Uh, do come and join me if you're in the area. Um, and then I've got down in my diary here, a church diary that says organ recital in St. Morgan at 3.30. So uh, again, if it's something you like, please do go along. I'm not quite sure what that is, uh, but it is in the diary. So I'm guessing something is happening in St. Morgan at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. And then... I'll be joining you for morning prayer on Tuesday, as usual, live from St Morgan Church. So hopefully see you all then. Have a wonderful evening. Whatever it is you're going to be doing for the rest of your time. Good night. <laughs>